Alright, here we go. Colonel Sprague. Fort Meade Alliance Foundation President Dion Vergutz, Garrison Commander Colonel Eric Sprague, and former Garrison Commanders Colonels Ed Rothstein and Brian Two, Foley kick one. off the renovation of Union Hall. More on that story in just a moment. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, a CYS child care update plus information on COVID testing at Kimbrough. These stories and more, but first, a DOD stop movement directive in place since March was lifted on June 30th, meaning service members can now continue with their permanent change of station moves. Installation Transportation Officer Jacqueline Sapp points out where stop movement stopped the process. Our actual internal processes never really stopped. We continue to process the applications as the service members, you know, and, and civilians put in their applications and their requests. However, you know, the booking office, so we're the front office, so we just process it, validate the data to make sure everything is correct. And then we send it to the booking office where that's where the stop happened. At the time of this recording, dates through July 27th are completely booked up for movers. SAP says that Human Resources is working to adjust reporting dates if necessary. She asks customers to be patient and flexible. Plan out as far as you can and be flexible now that we're back into the move, moving uh, uh, zone. Uh, just to be flexible with their, with their dates, to not to give notice to their landlord if they're renting until they have a confirmed date and phone call from the TSP. SAP says that while the transportation office is back to 50% manning, the process will continue to be largely electronic. Everything is done electronically. So the email traffic and the phone traffic has significantly increased for my personnel um, since we're not having you know people come in to do face-to-face. -face. Uh, we're doing as much as we can um, electronic. So that process has changed versus a customer coming into our office, dropping the paperwork off. We're encouraging them to just you know email them to us. In other news, last week we spoke with the MWR's Director of Child and Youth Services, Francisco Jamison, about the phased-in approach to the reopening of board child care centers. In that interview, he mentioned how things are fluid and subject to change, which brings us to this week. Phase 2, the reopening of Child Care Center 1 and School Age Center 2, has been pushed back from July 20th to August 3rd. Because of this, there is some extra capacity in the centers that are currently open. Eligible parents will be notified. Additionally, CYS announced this week that they're recommending that anyone in child care priority categories 1F and below should seek care for summer day camp, child development care, and school age program care for the fall from another provider. According to the announcement, CYS is unlikely to be able to accommodate requests for child care with the current capacity being dictated by health protection condition measures. Child care priority categories are being adjusted with those changes going into effect on September 1st. Tune in to the next Garrison Town Hall on Facebook Live Thursday, July 23rd at 5.30 p.m. Director Jamison and Colonel Sprague will address these changes in child care and much more. Meanwhile, in other news, the renovation and transformation of Coon Hall into the Fort Meade Resiliency and Education Center got its official start this week with a wall-breaking ceremony. The renovation of Kuhn Hall, located at 4415 Llewellyn Avenue, is a result of a partnership with the Fort Meade Alliance. It's an organization made up of um, companies and volunteers uh, from uh, around Fort Meade that um, have a passion for the mission here. Uh, we focus on education and workforce uh, initiatives, military and family initiatives, uh, business, uh, business development, business growth, uh, making sure that um, uh, they can support the, uh, all the missions here at Fort Meade. Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Eric Sprague was joined by former commanders Colonel Brian Foley and Colonel Ed Rosti, who planted the seeds for the renovation back in 2011. Yeah, it's been a process. Um, part of it was first identifying the requirements uh, for the Re Education Resiliency Center. Uh, and then, uh, as we have gone through uh, finalizing those requirements, raising the money, uh, which took us about 18 months uh, for $3.6 million. And then the final process is really getting through the approval process to, uh, through the Army to give uh, a, a capability. Renovations are scheduled to be completed by the spring or summer of next year. Elsewhere, Kimbrough Ambulatory Care Center is receiving a lot of questions about COVID-19 testing. Questions range from what are the different types of tests to how does Kimbrough prioritize the testing to what happens if a positive test comes up. All of these questions and more are answered on an information sheet that we published on our Facebook page, Instagram, and the digital media page on the installation website. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.